Last month, this subcommittee convened a hearing on the challenges and opportunities for the United States-Saudi Arabia bilateral relationship. Today, we focus on the U.S.-Qatar relationship and Qatar's relationship with its neighbors. I think it's important to note that this rift in the Gulf is not new. Catherine Bauer, a, senior, a former senior level official at the Treasury Department, stated earlier this month on, at a think tank event, quote, Saudi Arabia and the UAE have sought for years to kind of galvanize Qatar's actions against the terrorist financiers that were operating and continue to operate in Qatar, end quote. Qatar has been known to be a permissive environment for terror financing, reportedly funding U.S.-designated foreign terrorist organizations such as Hamas, as well as several extremist groups operating in Syria. In 2014, the former deputy director of the CIA, David Cohen, called out Qatar publicly, along with the Kuwaitis, because according to him, quote, the private engagement with these countries had not achieved what we were trying to achieve, end quote. In fact, Qatar has openly housed Hamas leaders, Taliban leaders, and has several individuals who have been sanctioned by our U.S. Uh, State uh, Treasury Department, and it has failed to prosecute them. At least one high-ranking Qatari official provided support to the mastermind of the 9-11 terror attacks against our country, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed. Then, of course, there is Khalifa Mohammed, who is a U.S., EU, and U.N.-designated international terrorist for his role in financing al-Qaeda and the 9-11 mastermind. In 2008, he was tried and convicted in absentia by Bahrain for his terrorist activity and arrested later that year by Qatar, only to be released by the Qataris six months later and then openly financed by Doha. Can anyone guess what Khalifa Mohammed has been up to these days? He was implicated in terror financing activities in 2012, but more recently he has been alleged to be financing and supporting terror in both Iraq and Syria with no response from the Qatari government. Hamas leader Khalid Mashal also made Doha his headquarters for years while the Qatari's government support, with the Qatari's government support, and even the Muslim Brotherhood has received significant support from Qatar. Of course, not all of this is supported by the government in Doha. Many individuals and charities in Qatar have been known to raise large sums of money for Al-Qaeda, the Nusra Fund, Hamas, and even ISIS. In Qatar, there are, e there are three buckets, terror financing, by the government, terror financing done in Qatar through their own citizens that the government may not know about, and terror financing in Qatar that the government knows about but does nothing to stop it. According to the 2015 country reports on terrorism, the State Dep Department stated, quote, entities and individuals within Qatar continue to serve as a source of financial support for terrorist and violent extremist groups particularly regional al-Qaeda affiliates such as the Nusra front, front, end quote. There is no excuse for openly harboring terrorists and supporting groups that seek to harm our allies. And the excuse by Qatar that it is harboring these uh, nefarious actors is because the U.S. asked them to no longer stands up. Qatar should not be continuing this reckless policy due to past mistakes from previous Republican and Democratic in administrations. We must not allow for our air base to be used as a means to justify this sort of behavior and our lack of a more appropriate response. Doha's behavior must change the status quo, and if it does not, it risks losing our cooperation on the air base. The truth of the matter is that none of the Gulf countries, none of the Gulf countries are without their issues. All of the nations have been involved in funding different groups at some point that we would not approve of. But it seems like Saudi Arabia and the UAE are making progress at a faster rate, while Qatar is making some progress, but still is lagging slowly behind. According to the Congressional Research Service, quote, in October 2016, Danielle Glazer, then Assistant Secretary for Terrorist Financing in the Office for Terrorism and Financial Intelligence, told the Washington, D.C. Research Institute that over the past decade, Qatar has made less progress 
in countering terrorism financing than had Saudi Arabia, end quote. We must analyze the totality of our relationship with these Gulf countries. While Qatar only helps to facilitate our operations at our air base, the UAE, for example, has spent 12 years with us fighting alongside in Afghanistan and has been involved in counterterrorism operations with the US in Libya. So moving forward, one outcome that I hope comes out of this dispute is for the Gulf countries to work closely with our Treasury Department's Financial Action Task Force to root out and disrupt terror financing streams. This uneasy time may just be an opportunity for us to take a long, hard look at how, and for some if, we can effectively address and stop terror financing in the region and ultimately defeat the extremism that threatens the security of us all. And with that, I turn to my friend, the ranking member, Mr. Deutsch, for his statement.